Uh, next speaker is Laura, and he's been working for uh, Microsoft and uh, Media Corporation States. And currently he's Director of Development at Intel X Software in Europe. And he's going to tell us about Samari and how it can work for platform applications. And uh, yeah, just go back to the problem with Windows Technologies. Thank you. Imagine that your manager comes to your office one day and asks you to develop an application for the 15-year-old desktop application, a mobile application that runs on iPad, of course, on iPhone, Android tablets, and Android phones, and you have to develop this in about six to eight months or a even if you know the scope, even if you know the business, this is a very tight time frame. So the question for you is, what are your options? Of course, if you be in my place, this is not exactly what happened to me about six to eight month, uh, months ago. I was assigned to this task. And I went home and I was a little bit... No. It's a crazy request to ask such a thing in such a short amount of time, provided I didn't have any mobile experience in the same time. So, if you be in my shoes, you go home, sleep on it, wake up in the morning, crazy request, ask for crazy solutions, come up with a solution number one, and you know what? I'm gonna just fire my boss. Of course, if we have that magic one, we'll be really awesome, but we don't have that power. So, emotions cool down and we start coming up with really more down to work solution. Solution, the, the next solution that comes in your mind is, well, why not? We are software developers. We can learn a new language. Already know a language, learning another procedure or, or object-oriented language is not that hard. However, research has shown that it takes about six months to learn a new language, and it takes about five to seven years to really be a guru, to be a master of it. So the time frame doesn't work here to learn Objective-C and Java to create applications for both platforms. That being said, probably we're going to come up with another solution. Why not? We can hire people to do all this. We can hire a developer, iOS, and we can hire an Android developer. The problem with this is, of course, if you've ever been involved in hiring, hiring takes time. And sometimes it can take up those six months to find a, uh, the good fit. And not to mention, you have to add two more people to the team. The real solution that you are looking for is something that you write once and you can deploy on all those platforms. Some kind of a magic thing that solves all the problems on all the platforms. And when you start searching on the web, you come across a few frameworks. And I picked up two of them because those at that moment were the most used. And the others are really kind of the same flavor of these ones. Konya and Titanium. You're going to pick up an Excel file and try comparing them. I have to mention one more thing. We are a C-sharp, .NET framework, Microsoft stack company. We are a product company. We are building a product called Profit CRM. And in this case, when we start comparing those frameworks, one of the things that stands out is that you have to use JavaScript. Of course, we can learn JavaScript, but at the same time, it doesn't tap into our expertise of knowing C-sharp and being experts in C-sharp. More than that, we are building a CRM product, which means in this case that I need access to the native resource, specifically the contacts on the device. PhoneGap doesn't allow me to do that because specifically it is running in a browser and you have to use restrictions of security if you run in a browser. And we have hit and miss with a couple of store approvals. Some applications are going to be approved, some are not going to be approved. A little bit slower and so on, but really the deal breaker for, for our search was the last item there. I wanted to use very solid design patterns. We are building a product. I want to maintain this product five years, 10 years from now. I want to use what's called solid, and if you search on, um, if you search on Wikipedia, the solid principles come in object-oriented uh, programming, SS for single responsibility, build class and have only one and only one thing that is doing. Uh, OSTS for open for extension, 
close commodification, and so on. And we want a testing on development. We want an ecosystem where I can use unit testing. I can use testing from the beginning. And I'm not saying these things, Fonga or Titanic or JavaScript doesn't, you cannot do in those. There are frameworks that can help you. But I don't want to reinvent the, the wheel. I want something that's already very solid. So that being said, the question here is not that, oh, should I use Fonga, should I use Titanic, or should I use something else? The question boils down to the business requirements. What's the business you are building the application for? Okay, so in that case, is your business more JavaScript, more HTML, more webish, or is more backend? You need more logic in the, into it. And in our case, it was the case because we knew C Sharp, of course, and we want a lot of business logic there because a the CRM has a lot of business logic. And of course, we're going to come across what's called Xamarin. And that's how we are here. We find Xamarin. And Xamarin is the direct framework that we know from Windows. And it's supported to the other platforms, to specifically Mac and uh, Linux and so on. It's compiled to native code. It's not interpretation. It's not it's exactly native code for each of the, those platforms. And it's available on Mac and on Windows, obviously. But one thing that we really love, and this is probably a personal and unbiased here, it's it runs in Visual Studio. For me, Visual Studio, I, I tried Eclipse and other environments. Visual Studio is the best environment for a developer, from my point of view. So if you add it on top of it, it's really sharp, it's really amazing how quickly from an idea you can come up with a final product without reinventing the wheel. So all of this help us uh, choose from the summary. With the prototype, it worked. So right now, 10 days ago, actually, we released our product after all three months of development. So let me talk about how it looks like, and that's how we are here. Once you install Xamarin, you're going to create a project. Now, automatically, the project comes with four projects inside. You're going to have a Windows Phone project, an Android, iOS, and a portable project. Portable project is the, probably where you're going to spend the most time. Here, ourselves, we have about 99.9% .9 of our code. When you write an iOS, when you launch an iOS uh, application, you're going to launch the iOS plus portable. If you launch the Android, you're going to launch Android plus portable. Launch Windows Phone, Windows Plus Portable. So all, always portable lines, uh, launch with the other, with one of the other ones. Now, if you write an application, I'm trying to really simplify. What's an application? It's a user interface, and after the behavior, the actions, the things that happen when you interact with that interface. And Xamarin has this separation very well structured. First of all, out of the box, Xamarin Force comes with 30 plus controls from edits, from text boxes, everything that you think of more or less that is out of the box it, it is there. And here is a screenshot for application. We can see a search box here, we can see some images, we can see checkboxes, buttons, labels, uh, have a grid behind. All of this, if you render, I don't have it, but if you render on Android, you're going to look Android because it will be native code for Android and those things are Android. If you are, so out of the box comes with the controls. And those controls are put on the, uh, on the screen using something called layouts. And if you're Android or iOS developer, probably every, every one of, of those uh, environments have some kind of a layout. They took the layout concept and they, they normalized it across all platforms. So a stack layout, that means that all the UI elements, all the list elements are going to be put in a stack one after the other can be vertical or horizontal. And the grid layout, most probably the person we're gonna use the most, you have a little bit of a table layout. You can put in a certain row or certain col column the, the elements. Here we use the stack layout, here is a little bit of a grid layout, and you can mix them. And we have a static layout, an absolute layout, we did not use them, but they are there for you to use. Now, all of those elements from the UI can be described using a language called XAML. Xamarin comes from WPF, still from Microsoft, of course, and it was extended. It's an extendable application markup language based on XML, and you can think of it like HTML and JavaScript. With HTML, describe how the page looks like, and with JavaScript, you have the interaction. And the same here. XAML describes how the application looks like, and C Sharp, in this case, is going to be the code behind, you know, going to describe how that interaction, how we're going to behave that application. So, let me give you an example of how XAML looks like. It's very easy, as I said, it's XAML-based. And what it allows you 
It allows you a little bit of a separation. If you have designers in your team, the designers can come up a little bit of the look and feel, and you as a developer, you can write how the behavior is going to be once you click a button or you type something. Here I have a stack layout, and I put two elements. I put the label, which is right there name, and I put an entity, which is a text box, so it's something that you can write in, and it's quite that one. As I said, you can mix the layouts. Here I have a mixture of a lot of uh, stack layouts in different orientations. More than that, when you have the XAML, you also have something, is the extension that the uh, XAML did. They put something called on platform. This common code lands on, on all the platforms. But when we see this tag, the XAML framework is going to pick up the attribute based on where it's running. In this case, font size, if I'm running on iOS, it's going to be 30. If I'm running on Android, it's going to be 14. If I'm running on Windows, it's going to be 50. So you can use these kind of things inside the XAML to describe how the things are going to look like on a certain platform. And there are some quirks and because of that, for example, on, uh, on the iPhone or iPad, you have a bar here on the top. And sometimes you need to leave some space, but you don't need to leave that space on Android, for example. Stuff like that. Boom. Uh, you have now 30 plus controls, but what if that's not enough? You have even more than, than 30 controls. Maybe you have something more custom. Well. There is Xamarin Labs. You have components in this case, and you have uh, more UI elements in Xamarin Labs, and you have com component ties to uh, Xamarin. You can add additional components. We use this one, Wi-Fi, to test if you lost the connection to the network. There are most of them free, and you can extend your, uh, your framework. And it's not enough, and you need something that is specific for a certain platform. You have custom renders. You can really write your, your cross-platform control from scratch. And if that's not enough, you may have third-party controls that you can buy, or, for example, use this one, it's free, actually, uh, that express this grid, which is cross-platform, once again. Now, you did the part of the uh, UI, and now comes the code behind the C-sharp. And, of course, you need to learn C-sharp. If you know Java transition, C-sharp is not that uh, complicated, and it's like any other object-oriented uh, language. That's it. If you never learned C-sharp, you have to learn C-sharp, obviously. But it's nothing, nothing out of uh, ordinary here. One thing that still is not out of ordinary is the asynchronous programming, the input-output that you need to do in Xamarin. And this, again, is, is uh, normalized across all platforms. Everything is asynchronous. And this can pose some problems. Because asynchronous programming is not easy. When you talk about asynchronous programming, you talk about multi-threading. And multi-threading exposes all kinds of problems because of concurrency and risk conditions. And it can be complicated to divide. I do not like personally to have multi-threading if I don't need to. However, in this case, you need to. Okay, so that being said, let me describe to you how asynchronous programming works and how C Sharp 5 and now C Sharp 6 solves a little bit this problem. So if you use C Sharp, you're going to be amazed how easy it is to write asynchronous programming. So asynchronous pro programs, basically. First of all, here I have an example of uh, an import. I'm importing an, ex uh, an Excel file. A lot of rows, a lot of columns, and thousands of them. If I'm doing it from the UI thread, I'm going to block that thread. It will be unresponsive. I cannot click buttons until the operation is done. I'm forced to use another thread. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using another thread, I'm running the import on another thread, I'm starting that thread, and when that thread finishes, I have a callback method that tells me, hey, you are done, you can do whatever you need with the results by now. And I have the callback method here. The problem with the callback method in this context, sometimes, or in some frameworks, the callback method is called in that other thread, different than the UI thread. And there is constraints here. You cannot update UI elements, labels, text box, unless you are on the, uh, on the UI thread. So in this case, I need to marshal, I need to dispatch values to the UI thread. And that's why all of this is complicated because it is complicated. If I want to add here even try catch and error handling, this can become complicated, very, very complicated. C Sharp 5.0 introduced something called async away. And this is something really amazing. I really love C Sharp because of this even more. And it's available obviously in, uh, in desktop, but specific enough for Xamarin. More or less the same code like before. First of all, I'm tagging the method saying it's an asynchronous method. And the keyword important here is the wait keyword. Let me read the code semantically. Okay, I'm starting, I'm taking an instance of an info manager. 
I'm waiting for that import manager to run an import. I'm waiting for it. Once that is done, I'm executing line six and seven. Very easy, looks a little bit synchronous. Oh, I'm doing a wait, and after that, I'm doing something after that is done. However, this a wait here, this is the key keyword, and Microsoft built behind it a very, very complex state machine to make this look so easy. Here, they are launching a new thread, first of all. They, are do, they do launch a new thread. This one import is run, this launch on a new thread. And when that thread is done, line six and seven are executed. Second, this await is replaced with a return state. So two things are happening here. First of all, I'm launching a new thread and I'm returning immediately from here. And later on, line six and seven are executed. It's very impressive because this looks synchronous, but it's actually asynchronous programming in this case. So that's what I like about it. If you got the right for example, my advice is to really get very solid on async away. Very solid. It, it, it was a source of multiple bugs for us because we are thinking linearly. If I have some variables right here and I'm accessing them here, in between, because I'm running on a new thread, they can be changed. The state can be changed. And because of that, we're going to have a lot of errors. Hard to repo, usually. Um, so that's one of the challenges. Of course, Xamarin is beautiful. I wouldn't say that it's beautiful. It's a kind of a new framework. You're going to lose some connection. If you write on, on Mac, you still need a Mac machine because Visual Studio needs to connect to the Mac. They have to be on same network. Uh, sometimes you need to restart Visual Studio. You have some quirks like that when you use Xamarin. Uh, I think the way a huge pain for us was a very difficult to repro. You need memory down sometimes. It's really hard to repro. But I, I want to, if you decide to use Xamarin, do take some trainings or read something about this in the way because we're going to need uh, your transition. And now, if I'm talking about the conclusions, our experience, we just released our application about 10 days ago, really, literally 10 days ago. And uh, from our experience, it was really a very uh, pleased experience. I'm very pleased. Visual Studio integration have a link, link to SQL, link to uh, XML. Uh, strongly type debugger. The debugging experience in Visual Studio is amazing. It's exactly the same using Xamarin. Nothing changed there. You can put breakpoints, you can debug on a Mac machine and all of those things. What else? Very robust ecosystem from the UI point of view. And even they added 2D engines and 3D engines if you want to write games right now. And everything it is cross-platform. And that's look cross-platform. It really look and feel on each one of those platforms. Something that's very important for us, we use unit testing, they have EMU, the they have some Xamarin uh, test code, they have UI automation. You really can write very solid code using Xamarin. There is no, no question about, about it. And I never done an application on iOS, I never done an application on Android, I've done on, uh, on Microsoft uh, phone, on Windows phone. But this made me think cross platform. I still don't know anything about iOS, I still don't know anything about uh, Android. But I was able to write, we were able as a team, and of course, we were able to write an application without knowing all of those details in our case. And it's free. Microsoft decided to buy it about two months ago, around this close amount. And on, if you are on Mac, you just download Xamarin Studio. If you are on Windows, of course, you can use Visual Studio. And this kind of aligns to the new direction of Microsoft, the new leadership that they have there. And I'm biased, of course, like I worked there for seven years. But uh, Satya and Adela right now define the direction of, of uh, Microsoft to be a productivity company. Productivity is an individual, and I'm very pleased with Visual Studio. And productivity is a company. And at the same time, they embrace mobile cross-platform, mobile and cloud first. And this taps into this new vision of, uh, of Microsoft. So it's free if you want to use it. They even put it on source right, uh, right now. So my action item for you is just give it a try. You know, someday maybe your manager will come to your office and ask you to write a cross-platform application that runs on all three platforms in a record amount of time. You'll be pleased by the results. Any questions? I, I wouldn't expect yes. Uh, in its own runtime, 
in the long run time. And, uh, and what is related to performance, uh, performance issues if you have experienced any like on iOS or uh, Android? Oh, well, I don't have a comparison because we never had a, uh, a native application to compare it uh, to compare it with. But it's, from my point of view, it is uh, usable. It is exactly we have it right now. I'm not able to put it. I have application. You see, it's responsible like any other uh, application. You, you will, if I wouldn't tell you, you wouldn't know that I wrote an example and everything. So, from my point, if you write a game, I did not know that because that's probably something more that you need more uh, more CPU and so on. Yeah. On my OS, my understanding is actually compiled out better than the VM code, which is the code that runs on the device itself. It's so native code, it's natively compiled, and it's using the other code. But I think, I think it's, you have a danger here because you don't know ring tones and how it works about things, but you have a model like using cells and doing that properly and you just go to singletons and do stuff like that. If you don't know where SDK is, you run into the problem creating your own problems. So you need to. True. Sure. So uh, echoing that, Obviously, it depends on what's your, your business requirement right now, because if you need a lot of low-level interaction, of course, in that case, maybe not going to be the best to do. A hammer is not better than a screwdriver, unless it is doing the job. So in this case, for us, it did the job, and we are very pleased with the results. Okay. Uh, hello, I have a question. Uh, first one is, I want to know if you can add the native code together with somebody. Right, so you can write in the, uh, if you remember I showed that screen with four projects. The iOS project, that's where you can add your native, more or less native code, that you can interact with the system on the device level. It will be specific for that device for iOS, not going to be cross platform. Okay, and I think that answers my second question, because my second question was, if the submarine tool is actually using all the resources from the API provided by Apple, iOS or a set of them that are more common. To that's what right. it's doing kind of a normalization from all three platforms. That, that, that's why it's coming only with three thirty controls. For example, Checkbox, did, you did see that my screen chart Checkbox. Checkbox is not cross platform. I think Windows Phone doesn't have it. So you don't have Checkbox out of the box. Okay. Um, and in terms of speed, oh, yeah, it's exactly the same with the one written in uh, native code. That's what I'm saying that I cannot answer positively on that, but I didn't feel that the UI was slower or that I, I'm really, from that point of view, I did not feel any difference. You don't know that I wrote any example, let me go that way. Hi, my name is Patrick. So I have two questions. Sure. So um, in our company, for example, we have three departments. One is Dotnet, one is Android, and one is iOS. One of the questions when you start thinking about using a framework like this one is who is better suited to start learning it? I'm sorry, can you repeat the last one? Who is better suited to start learning it? So, uh, .NET developer or mobile developer? Because a .NET developer already knows kind of the syntax, while a mobile developer knows the interfaces of the SOLES. I think it boils down to the business requirements, that's one thing. So the business requirements, where you are targeting, you know, what's your audience, that's one thing. But second, for us in, in particular, we are a C-sharp company. We are desktop, C-sharp, Microsoft stack. And we want to maintain this code for a long time. And we want a C-sharp. We want that we have only one and single code base that really understand. And we, we, we can transition from desktop to the, to the examiner easily. So it does our requirements like this that really match it with the uh, examiner. I don't know if you answer your question. Okay. So I, could, I couldn't say in your particular case how it's going to be. It might be that sometimes an Android and iOS developer matches better because you need something very specific, maybe internet, internet of Things. I know this is going to be easy to do Internet of Things or, or uh, interacting with some kind of uh, you know, something in the cloud that is you know, proved to Bluetooth and so on. I'm not so sure about that. Okay, but second question is I assume by now you have some understanding of the ramp up period. So let's take a simple example. You can okay. an intermediate two, three year. Experience working under the .NET framework, how much would be the ramp up? Oh, that, that was really totally, extremely fast because I, I worked with C Sharp for about 10, 10, 12 years by now. And transitioning to this, it was really like building a prototype. I would say in two weeks you are really good in summary. In two weeks you are really good. And I thought you have to really probably go a little bit deeper, but in the first day, you should download it and, and see it for yourself. You should, uh, if you know already C Sharp, you can do an application tonight very fast. An application, yes, but going to something productive, I don't think it's realistic to expect that in two weeks 
because you have a core, you have an Android part of the library, which is uh, uh, intended for the Android user experience. You have an iOS part, and basically anybody who starting to learn at least two of the. Okay, you should expect. I understand. Okay, you should expect the four six points to be the uh, relatively good. Yeah. Like that. It depends on how much is common code. In our case, it was about 99% common code. We are not going to iOS and Android specific uh, specific things. If that's the case in your in your case, then you need somebody who really knows us those platforms a little bit better than us. But you're saying that in summary, in the framework is 99%. That was our application. That's what I'm saying. Our application for the CRM, we wrote everything almost in the common code. All right. Thanks. Let's say Apple will release a new iOS mm -hmm. version. Uh, Apple developers will have access to developer previews to beta version of the iOS. Right. Uh, so that they can have time to adjust their apps, to new APIs, and right. the new things. Uh, will uh, Xamarin has partnership with Apple. Whenever they released a beta or something like that, the same day almost when they released uh, the new thing, you have Xamarin available on that new. It's fair to say that Apple supports the previous version, so you want your apps on break, you just won't be able to make these versions. Sure. Uh, earlier this year, at the field, Microsoft, or actually Xamarin, presented two new tools, Inspector and Workbooks. Did you play with them in your company? We, uh, we did play a little bit with the performance monitor, and uh, the Inspector and Master sure is one of the other team members. But indeed, they really are broadening the, the experience and the tools that they, that they give the, the developers. So the performance, you can do performance investigations, which is something that sometimes you need to do, and they have tools for that, uh, which is very good. And one thing that we did use in our application is Xamarin Insights, where you can really have the core stack trace cross-platform, exactly the line that failed, and it's cross-platform. Usually you need it only for specific platforms, and it's, it's, it's amazing, Xamarin Insights. Hi. Uh, all sounds wonderful with this Xamarin, but while developing your product, which is getting released 10 days ago, yeah. besides the fact that everything needs to be asynchronous, what are the problems in your company with Xamarin? Uh, usually there were the problems with the stability. Like if, if I have to pick the two, it was asynchronous programming because we had really hard repo bugs, but it was uh, the stability of the framework itself. As, like I said, we upgraded the new, the, the new Xamarin framework and it doesn't connect anymore to my machine. Uh, we lose connection while you are developing. So it's kind of annoying stuff that usually if you go on forums you find solutions because they, they are very responsive uh, on that. So the experience of developing was something that I think is something that was not, I was not even extremely pleased. Uh, other than that, once I wrote the code and I launched it, it, it was working. Uh, we live in a world where uh, we are all using uh, third-party libraries. Mm -hmm. How can you integrate them into some? As I mentioned, we already did uh, that. There's another third-party libraries. If you, need, uh, you can think of a library that's com components. You can add components to the Xamarin framework, and we use a Dev Express grid, which was a UI grid, but it's also a component that we added there. So go ahead. Uh, and, and if someone uh, adds a framework, for example, uh, for example, you can add. Uh, do the bindings for that framework to work with Xamarin? You have to write a component from Xamarin. You can really write a component. And the, the framework itself gives you all the, the tools necessary to write a component that can be integrated with all the others. And also you can extend UI elements and so on, all those things. You can create a new UI element that never, that never ever existed before. Can I suggest a game that gets top of here? Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, we're running a bit late on the intervention of sex, so we need to, we need to go to the next one. Can you ask him if we have a break or yeah? Because we're running late, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.